Just about nine years ago, I was watching a Google Chrome event where Sundar was announcing some updates to Chrome as well as introducing Chrome OS. So I'm very, very excited to announce that today we are introducing the Chrome OS pilot program. Let me show the device. So this is the device which we are going to use for the pilot program. Later that day, I was browsing the web and I found a link that said get a free Google Chrome sticker. And I was like, wow, this is awesome. So I went to sign up. We ran a promotion a couple days ago announcing a sticker for your Chrome laptop. And there was a quiz. If you did that quiz and you got selected, you'll get a sticker. But it turns out it'll be on an actual Chrome notebook being shipped to you right now. But little did I know that not only was I going to get a Google Chrome sticker, but I was actually going to become a part of the pilot program for Chrome OS. So here is my first Chrome device. This is the CR48, which was a part of that pilot program where Google sent these out to everybody. I was extremely excited to become a part of this awesome pilot program where I got to test out the first Chromebook. And this thing was pretty awesome. I use this at school to type up notes, use Google Docs and everything. Well, in today's video, we're going to talk about the culmination of this device from a ton of different devices and what Google has brought to us today. This is the Pixelbook Go. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. So this is the Pixelbook Go, a 13.3 inch Chromebook laptop that runs fully on Chrome OS and is the latest edition from Google. So this does come in just black as well as not pink. And there are a few different size options you can get as well as you can get higher resolution and faster processor. So this is the i5 edition with 128 gig of storage. So here inside the box, this is the Pixelbook Go. Looks like we have some instructions on getting started. Ooh, some Google stickers. I'm gonna throw one of those on there maybe. And then here you have the power brick that it comes with. Now this is a USB-C power brick. This is the one that you should use to charge the device. So this device is very light. It weighs less than two pounds and it is nice and easy to grip. It has this kind of cool texture here on the bottom of the device. And then for the ports on the left side here, you have the USB-C charging port, and then you have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On the back, there's just the hinge, and on the right side, there is also a USB-C port with a little light dot. So once we open the device, it boots right up. Over here, we do have the option to change our language if we want to. And right here, we have the option to let's go. So we're gonna get right into this. And you can connect it to 2.4 gigahertz or five gigahertz networks. So one of the great things about Chrome OS is there's not this hassle with updates like you would find on other operating systems like Windows 10 or Mac OS. With Chrome OS, it will automatically find the update whenever you're connected to the internet, update it in the background. The next time you turn the device back on, it will be updated. So it's very hassle-free and you'll always have the latest security updates and everything on the device without having to do anything. Now, while we were waiting for this to update, um, some of the other things that you'll notice is on the keyboard, there are a few different buttons. So right here, instead of a caps lock button, you have the circle here, which is a launcher. Down here, you have the Google Assistant button. And then there is no delete key up here. You just have the backspace. So up at the top row, we have a back, a refresh. Jump to full screen. Open all windows, brightness down, up, pause, play, volume, mute, and then down and up, and then the power button. Over on the side, you do have these two speaker grills, and then the hinge on here is actually really nice. So it's very firm wherever you place it, you can just see a little bit of wobbling. And then down here on the screen, we do have the shutdown option, and over here you'll see your Wi-Fi indicator, and then down here we have the battery life indicator and the times. It is said that you will have 12 hours of battery life on this device. Chrome OS uses way less power than a regular laptop just because you're mainly browsing the web and doing smaller tasks, but it's a very functional device. And we'll get more into that as we go through this device. But 12 hours is definitely plenty of time to be able to accomplish what you need to in a work day. Once you update, the Chromebook will then ask you to sign in to your Google account. If you do not have one, you can select more options and you would be able to create an account right here. 
So then just sign into the main account that you want to use on this device. Now Chromebooks are great because you can have multiple users. So you can have multiple people use the device all secured under their own accounts. So here it's telling me that I have signed in and then it's going to use Chrome Sync. So this will sync your bookmarks, history, passwords, and other settings will be synced to your Google account. So you can use them all on your devices. So if you use Google Chrome on your computer, it would sync all the information that you have here or added here over to that device, as well as even on the Chrome browser on your phone. And then here you can have personalized Google results. Google may use the browsing history, personalized search ads, and other services. You can change this at any time. So you could review the sync options of what's going to be backed up in sync, but right now we're just gonna keep it a default and select accept and continue. So on these newer versions of Chrome OS, you can actually download Android applications right to the device. So it's a more functional device. So here it is saying it found 11 applications that can be installed on this device that I use on other devices. So I would just need to select the ones that I want to install. So let's go with Photoshop and Adobe here, and then we'll go install and continue. So it's going to download those, but then we can find more applications in the Play Store. Next is a screen talking about Google Partners and services with the Google Assistant. So we're going to agree to that. And then now we have access to Assistant with Voice Match. So it knows who I am based on my voice. So with voice match, I'll be able to talk to the Google Assistant on my Pixel Book, just like we would a Google Assistant speaker. So we're going to agree to that. And it already does have my voice match setting saved because I've used other Google Assistant products before. To activate the Google Assistant, I can either press the Google Assistant key or I can use the wake word at any time the device is plugged in. So now it's asking me to connect my phone. So a Chromebook and an Android phone works well together because you can actually text from the Chromebook through the Google Messages application, and you can also share your internet connection. And then you can also unlock the Chromebook from your phone. So here it is asking me to connect a device, and it has all of this saved to my account. Um, so I'm just going to select my Pixel 4 XL, and then I'm going to accept and continue. Now that we are logged in, there's a lot happening, but let's go through the tour real quick to learn how to use this. All right, so the first thing it talked about was the launcher down here. So if I press the little circle, that is your launcher. And that's the same circle that you see on the keyboard. So if I press that, it's going to pop up my Google search as well as some recommended applications that I have. But if I keep scrolling up, so let's do that one more time, scroll up, here are all the different apps or web apps that are currently installed and that I've used before on my other Chrome devices. So because this is using the internet for most of the things, really these are just links to the full website. So even though it looks like an application, it is just going to that web browser to do that. Some things are a little more intense and they do download information to the device. But for the most part, this will be the same experience as Google Chrome on the computer as it is here on the Pixel Book. So there we can see all those different applications. And the Pixel Book Go is also touchscreen. So here I can open up the apps, swipe up to see my other applications. And then here I have two different rows of applications. Now, if I want one of these to be added to my home screen, let's say I want Gmail down there. I just click and drag it down to my bottom row here and I can customize this bottom row, which is really cool. So then at any time you just click to the side to move everything away. So now if I wanna remove these at any time, I can just drag them up and move them off of the shelf there. Now over in the bottom right-hand corner, this is where we have different quick settings as well as our notifications. So if we click on here, at the top you'll see notifications. So I do have what's called Chrome Sync on to sync all of my information. So I need to click on here and type in my passphrase. And then once I hit submit, it's going to sync my applications, bookmarks, extensions, history, settings, themes, wallpaper, open tabs, passwords, addresses, phone numbers, payment information, and all of that good stuff. So let's select submit. And then you can quickly scroll by using two fingers so I can go up and down just like that. So it is going to sync all that in the background. Let's go back here to notifications. So here you can click to see the highlights. So here it has turned on smart lock. So next time it's actually going to unlock my Chromebook because my phone is nearby. So you can click the X on there to go get those away, or you can swipe to remove those as well. Now it's giving me all these little pop-ups because it's downloaded different extensions and stuff that I have previously installed on Chrome. And now you can see that this is the Chrome that I would just have on my computer. Here are all my different bookmarks that I have and other extensions that I already have. Now, if you want to go and get any of those, all you need to do is go into your apps, swipe up, and you can find all of those in the web store. So the web store is where you will go and download different extensions. You can personalize themes, you can download other applications and you can find games. 
Now, like I mentioned before, there is a different way to download other content as well. So let's minimize our Chrome browser there. We're going to go into the apps, swipe up here, and then we also have the Play Store. So the Play Store has access to other Android applications that have been formatted for Chrome OS. So like right here, it's showing that I previously installed Mario Kart Tour. I could download that on here as well. So those are games, you have other types of applications. So like, let's say I want to download Instagram here on the Chrome OS, which is really cool because then I could be browsing on my computer and upload photos right from the Chrome OS, which I can't currently do on a PC. And then down here, there are all kinds of other applications that I already have on my device. So let's say I want to download Google Chrome because this is something that I use often. Um, and of course, I can access all of my lights through the Google Assistant as well. Okay, so Instagram has downloaded, so let's open that up. And so it's going to open up in its own little window here. All right, and there you go, we are signed into Instagram. So there is no like super full screen mode because Instagram is a portrait application, but I have all the options down here. I have search, favorites, my profile, and then I can also add a new photo. So I can select allow. So it looks like it's formatted a little bit incorrectly, but you can upload a photo if you really want to from here. And then we have, let's try this one up here. There you go, so you could quickly add to your stories and you have all the different options down there. And if, it did say it's in beta, so improvements there over time. So if I wanna close this app, I can minimize it right there or completely close it down. And then let's close that. So now we are back on our home screen. So if we click with two fingers, we can go into our settings so we can have it always show the shelf down here. We could change the shelf position to the left or the right side. And then here we can set wallpaper. So let's go back to this one or let's actually go over here. You can choose all kinds of different wallpapers to really make that uh, home screen look nice. All right, that one's pretty cool. So going back over here, so after going through the notifications, then we have our settings. So here, if I wanna change my Wi-Fi settings, I can do that. Here I could connect via Bluetooth to other devices like uh, headphones, or you could connect a Bluetooth mouse if you wanted to. Here I can adjust the notifications or what applications are gonna give me notifications and turn on do not disturb. Here I have Nightlight, which is a feature to help you use the device better at night so it's not as blinding or bright. And then here we have cast. So I could instantly cast two other devices that are in the room. And then here we have our volume controls. Of course, we can change it right here. And we have our brightness. So you can see it gets very dim right there and it can also get very bright. And then here we have the power key to turn it off. We can lock our account. And then here we can go into the settings. So here, when we lock our account, it's going to take us back to the lock screen and then it requires the password to go in. And so let's type that back in. Now, the other option you have is sign out. So sign out, it doesn't remove your information from the device, it just takes you back to the sign in screen. So here I could then type in my password, but when I sign out, I then have the option to browse as a guest. So maybe you want to pass this off to a friend so that they can look up something. When you have the guest mode on, they can't see any of your information, log into any of your accounts. It's a totally brand new window without any information stored. Now you can also add a guest. So maybe you have a kid that is going through school and needs access to different information. You could sign in on here. They would just need to enter in their password information as long as they have a Google account for the school, or you could just create an account if they are 13 and older and sign in and they have access to save all their passwords and everything else. So let's add a person and have my daughter sign into her account. Once we sign into her profile, she will then have access to all of her bookmarks that have been synced through Chrome on the computer. Now this is great because she's not going to see any of my information and all of hers are stored within here. Now you can also use Family Link to secure what your kids can do when they sign into an account, but I'll cover that in another video. So after my daughter's done with her homework, I can just select here to sign out and it will take me back to the main page where I could sign into my account again or her account. So here will be the different profiles that you have. So now let's try out using Google Assistant on the Pixelbook. So again, I can hold down the Google Assistant button or I can actually just use the wake up command. Okay, Google. Turn off the office lights. And if you hold down Alt and use the brightness keys, you can also increase the brightness of the backlit keyboard. So when you tap the Google Assistant key, it brings up the keyboard so you could type in your message or you can come over here and press the microphone to give voice input. Play Ralph breaks the internet. 
Sure, playing Ralph breaks the internet on Netflix. Now, because I use Google Chrome to store my passwords, all that information is there and here it's asking me to update my password. So the next time I log in, it will remember that information. Hey Tapper. No, Ralph, I haven't seen Vanellope. Not since the last time you asked me. So after playing with the Pixel Book Go throughout the day, I've had a really great time, but there have been a few things that haven't worked properly, but I was able to figure those out. So I wanna show you what I'm talking about. So the first thing I found a little weird was when you press the Google Assistant button, it pops up Google Assistant, but then it's waiting for you to type to search Google or something else. So there, if I type in change office lights to blue, you can see that that worked. If I want to activate the voice function on Google Assistant, I would need to press the icon over here. Now you can also do this by going into the little search bar right here, tapping Google Assistant and that will pop up, but that's two clicks and I just wanna to talk to Google Assistant. So again, if I open the settings, so let's open this and then type in settings. So that's nice when I wanna quickly just do settings but I do want to be able to have voice control. So, so if I go up here to the top and say assistant, so after typing in assistant, it pops up everywhere. You can see the assistant. You can actually adjust the assistant key to be something else if you wanted it to be. But then down here we have Google Assistant, which is enabled. And when I tap on that, we have this option right here called preferred input. So default to using voice instead of keyboard. So I am using voice quite a lot, so I want it to default to the voice. So I can just turn this on and now it will default to the voice. So let's try that out. Set the office lights to green. Sure, changing six lights to green. And just like that, it works perfectly. And then if I click the button and want to type, I can just click the little keyboard icon over there and then I can type my message. And there we adjust the lights as well. Or I can click here, turn office lights to blue. Sure, changing six lights to blue. Now the next setting I thought was interesting was when I was using scrolling. So now it does start with the traditional method of scrolling, which you are probably used to, where when you scroll with your fingers down, it scrolls up, but maybe because we have a Mac in the home and I've been using that a little bit, um, I'm used to the opposite way of doing that. So to change that, we're gonna head back into the settings and then I'm going to select touchpad, just search for that. And then here we have the option for Australian typing. I don't know if this is what they do in Australia or just because it's opposite, that's how it works. So now when I scroll down or when I scroll up, it moves the screen down. So I really like this method. I prefer it much better just because it's more like if I were to touch the screen and scroll up, it goes down. Same thing happens on the touchpad. Or if I scroll down, it goes up. Hopefully that makes sense. So after adjusting those settings, it was really smooth to be able to do everything. So after adjusting those settings, things seem to be working really good. Now, a few other things that you can do. So let's say I go to a new web page. If I want to go back, I can just use two fingers and swipe back and there you'll see the little icon or I can swipe two fingers and go forward. So really cool navigation. Um, lots of stuff that I can talk about here, but that's pretty much all I'll cover on how to navigate through the device. One other cool thing is if you want to use Caps Lock, you can hold down Alt and then the little launcher button. And then here it says Caps Lock is on. So I'd hold Alt and the little circle button to turn that off. So after playing with it throughout the day, I've really had no issues and it's worked really good. The only issue that I have found after playing with the Pixelbook Go is let's say I want to open Duo that is here in my app tray. When I select Duo, all it does down here is it keeps spinning. So this definitely is a software bug. I've seen this on a few different applications, but it just won't work. So usually if I open Chrome and then go to Google Duo, I was able to allow access to my camera and microphone so I could make a Google Duo call. But as of right now, that's kind of the main issue that I have found. Now, one thing that I really like is the speaker quality on these. So let's play some music. Play my new jams playlist. So as you can hear it, the volume gets really loud. So 
So just whenever I was watching a video or playing music, it sounded really good, crisp and clear. So I'm very impressed with it. There's some pretty good bass that comes out of these as well. And for documents, this will load up Google Drive. So you can use Google Sheets, Google Docs, Google Slides, all on the Chromebook without having to install any other Windows application or buy software for that. It is all available through Chrome OS. And that's something that I'm going to be using this mainly for. Right now I'm actually using a MacBook Pro and it's just super old, it takes forever to boot up, but this boots up super quick. I can load up all my documents on here. I already use Google Docs as well. So loading them up on here is super simple to do. And then I'll be able to type out everything that I want to do on here instead of having to wait for the computer to back up or get distracted on my phone. This is definitely going to be a very productive device to have around. So after spending the day with the Pixelbook Go, I'm really impressed with what it can do. As somebody that uses Chrome all the time, it's just really nice that everything is on here instantly. I don't have to go and download any other applications that I would need on another PC, but it's all right here. Now this is gonna be my main go-to device to make notes, write scripts down, and do other things just on the go without needing my full PC to edit videos. That's pretty much all I use my main computer for is to edit these videos. So that's something I will be testing a little bit on the Pixelbook Go to see if it can do that. But pretty much everything else, all of my needs, email, everything can be done here with the Pixelbook Go and Chrome OS. It really has so much functionality. There's so many applications already built in that pretty much anything you want to do, you would be able to do on the Pixelbook Go. It's pretty cool that my daughter was able to quickly sign into our account and instantly she knew what to do, she knew where to go, and she already knows how to operate this as a Chromebook is something that they're already using in the schools. I do like the productivity of a Chromebook with a keyboard like this instead of using like a tablet just because you can do so much more with the keyboard instead of just playing games on it all the time. The addition of the touchscreen is pretty fun, so I could play Mario Kart Tour on here with the touchpad, but having the touchscreen made it a lot more fun to play. I won't be using that a ton, but it's certainly nice to have it there in case I ever want to use it. So the only real confusing part about Chrome OS is having the web applications and then the Play Store applications. So from what I've learned, pretty much anything that's on the web, you can make into a web app. So anything that you would typically access online um, without having to download a program, that's going to be in the web store. Now, some of those apps haven't been formatted to a simple Android application. So that's where you would want to go to the Play Store and find an application that can do that. So for example, Dropbox. Dropbox has a online interface that you can use, but for whatever reason, it just doesn't work that great on some of the things I'm doing, transferring and moving large files. But if I download the Android Dropbox application, it pulls up on the Pixelbook Go for no problem, and you have a bit more functionality and just it's easier to use. Now let's take TickTick, which is a task management application. It has a app for the phone, and it has a web application, which I could also download the phone app on the Chromebook and I could use them both. But for that thing, it's a very simple application where you just kind of check off a few things. I don't feel like I need to download the Play Store version because it gives me a better version on the web. So that's something that you just have to play with to learn which apps work better through the web and which apps work better downloaded from the Play Store. Now, the last thing is battery life. So I've been playing with this all day. It was fully charged. And currently I'm at 42% with five hours and 22 minutes left. So we've been playing games, we've been doing all kinds of things on it, screen's been on. So, so far battery life has been really stellar, but I'll be putting it through its paces over the next few months. So if you have any further questions about the Pixelbook Go, please let me know in the comments below. I wanna make some follow-up videos to this, a further in-depth review, as well as some tutorials using Chrome OS and Chrome on the computer, and some tips and tricks that you can use. So I want you to click the top video there to go and check out Scott's video from Technically Speaking, all about how to use a Pixelbook to video edit. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.